In this screencast I'll show you how to use the Wilson activity model to perform VLE calculations for ternary systems. So to start with the equations for a multi-component Wilson activity model to, to give us the activity coefficient is, is shown here and the, the activity coefficient for any component k equals 1 minus natural log of the sum of xj uh, lambda kj for all the components from 1 to m and then also the sum from i equals 1 to m of this term here which is xi lambda ik divided by the sum from j equals 1 to m of xj lambda ij so quite complicated actually um, this term is very similar to the, the, value, the, the equation that you have for the binary system but you do it for all combinations of, uh, of components right now if we write this out explicitly for a ternary system we get these equations here and so this is actually a bit more useful to actually implement in Excel just to note though lambda 1 1 lambda 2 2 lambda 3 3 they all equal 1 so where these appear they actually just equal 1 and so we can simplify this further to, to here so these are the equations that we're going to actually implement in Excel to give us some ternary calculations now to do this we need all of the binary interaction parameters for all of the constituent binary systems so the components we have are acetone, methanol and water as our components 1, 2 and 3 so we need binary interaction parameters for the acetone methanol for the acetone water and for the methanol water we also need the molar volumes for each of these components now there's a whole range of different combinations of x1, x2, x3 to just give us a good spread of, of different data points for different compositions in the liquid phase now these parameters here, there's six of them that we need to calculate for a ternary system there was only two for a binary but in a ternary system we need all six of these and as, as shown previously and as, as shown in that formula it's the ratio of the molar volumes times by the exponential of the, uh, the interact, binary interaction parameter divided by RT and that ends up being the same across all of these now gamma 1 uh, the activity coefficient for component 1 is calculated from all of this so it's actually quite busy this uh, this equation there's a lot going on so I'm just going to quickly show you something that allows you to sort of sanity check your equation once you've built it and so what I've done here is I've programmed in a big long formula which gives us the formula text from this cell and then makes a number of substitutions so it actually substitutes every time G16 appears it substitutes it with X1 every time H16 appears it substitutes it with X2 and so on across all of these so it's a really quick way just to check that the formula looks right so it equals the exponential of 1 minus natural log and then all these terms in here and actually that's just a really quick way to check that the Excel formula is performing as it should do I've done that for gamma 2 and for gamma 3 as well right once we've calculated these we use them in the usual way with the extended routes law we then sum up all three of those now we've got three components so we have three partial pressures we also have three part, uh, mole fractions in the vapor and to get the pressure that we want in this in this case we're aiming for 760 millimeters of mercury because we have literature data for this and so what I've done is varied the temperature here in order to give the pressure that I was after and that's been done for all of the different examples now to plot this data out we're going to use a ternary plot so here's an example 
where we can plot the mole percent of acetone, methanol and water and it will give us a, a point on the ternary plot. So here we have for 80% water, we follow the line across here, we see that meets the, the data point here. For the methanol axis, we have to follow the lines going down this way. And for the acetone, we follow the axis along here. And of course, if we change this, the, the data point will move and we can make further changes. But each time that changes, you can still see these lines just showing us this is 50% water, uh, we've got 30% methanol, 20% acetone. So if we actually plot out the data that we've calculated for the ternary system using Wilson, we can have a, have a look at what's going on here. So the red crosses with the red line through them, that is the liquid data. So these are all the liquid compositions that we've selected. And then we've calculated vapour compositions for each of these, and that's shown by the blue line with the blue crosses. And the black squares are actually the literature values. And so you can see they're a little bit out in some places. A bit better over this side. And if we just go through, we can actually look at, as we vary the acetone composition. So this one is for 20% acetone. We can see what we get. 30% acetone. 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80. So you can just look across a whole range of different uh, compositions uh, and just see what's going on within these ternary systems. Literature data details are given here and, and overall that is how you can use the Wilson Activity Model to calculate ternary VLE.